Greetings again, my fellow YouTubers. I love you. I'm sure you love me. Um, if you're watching this video, share it on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Check out my poetry on allpoetry.com slash darksidewritings. If you haven't checked it out lately, there's a couple new things on there. One is called I, the other one is called Antidepressed Ants. Anyways, um, I just finished singing another love song. It's one of my favorites. It's called Parasite by Gene Simmons of Kiss. Anyways, if I seem a bit slow, um, I'm not drunk. I've just taken some clonopin. It's late at night, and I always take the clonopin late at night, and it helps me to relax to do these videos and make me tired. Anyways, this issue uh, that I'm going to discuss is about control. And I would love if there was a study done on people that are officially diagnosed with borderline personality, if they can look back at their childhood and see a place where they were put in a situation where control was taken away from them and they were put in situations that, because they're children, that they weren't mentally equipped to deal with. And my personal feeling, I can look back at my life and I can see all these things that um, happened with me that I didn't have any control over and it's almost like my childhood stopped and I was dealing with all these adult situations that I wasn't equipped to deal with. So it'd be interesting to see if there was a study where other borderlines face the same type of issue. And I think part of the conflict is um, control and I think as we get older we didn't have that control and you know in childhood it's important for us to have the control you know we're adults now now we're going to be in control and I think that's part of the reason for a lot of conflict not all the reason but part <clears throat> and I think when there's a situation that goes on and there's a conflict with somebody that has borderline personality I think it's important for the person that doesn't have borderline personality to not get caught up into the argument but relinquish control and let the person that has the borderline personality take control and kind of take a back seat. I'll give an example. When I was in DBT there were times I just had to get the fuck out of there. Um, I couldn't deal with it. And the psychiatrist or psychologist that was running it he, he could have argued with me. It could have gotten to a confrontational thing. But rather than do that, he gave me control and basically said, I wish you'd stay, but if you need to leave, I understand. I'll see you next week. He gave me control to make that decision and allowed me to, to leave, and it didn't turn into a confrontation. And so I think when there's situations that happen, and again, it goes back to, I think, people with borderline personality disorder, certain, certainly me, again, a lot of this deals with identity. A lot of us deal with not having a wide range of emotions, you know, very concrete emotions. The more subtle emotions, we, we don't fully understand, at least I don't. And... Um, <clears throat> A lot of times it's hard to articulate what it is we are feeling. And sometimes we don't, we feel so worthless that we don't think we have the right um, to ask for the things we need and a lot of manipulation comes in with that. But I think when there's a conflict, it's important for the person on the other end rather than get caught up in that, to relinquish control and give the person with borderline control to make the decision and how to proceed. And I think that could alleviate a lot of arguments. Now going back to my psychologist that was running the DBT program, it, it, it could have turned out differently. I mean, he could have relinquished control, said, I want you to stay. I understand if you need to leave. 
Um, I'll see you next week. Another borderline might take that completely different, like, you want me to leave, you don't care whether I'm here, and that could create a conflict. But at least then, the, ther the therapist, the psychologist has something to fall back on, and it has to be handled with kid gloves. Because we're sensitive, we're in a state of mind where we're thinking all emotionally, and there's nothing rationally going on. And by handling it with kid, kid gloves, and not in a sarcastic way, and not in a mean way, and not in a defensive or confrontational way, there's an opportunity, I think, in a lot of instances, that can trigger the person with borderline personality disorder to start focusing on using the rational side of their mind. And I'll give an example. So let's say that process went through. I took offense to it. I, I was like, my God, you know, you don't want me to say you don't like me. You're telling me to leave and all this type of stuff. At least then he can come back and say, listen, Rick, I, I want you to stay. Um, I would like you to stay here. But you're telling me that you need to leave but I want you to stay. I'm giving you control to make that decision. My preference is for you to say, what would you like to do? And I think that can diffuse some situations and may prompt the person with borderline personality disorder to start thinking rationally. There is no guarantees of that, but it's an option and it may work, but it has to be handled with kid gloves. It can't be done in a defensive way because it's going to make matters worse. It can't be done in a sarcastic way. It can't be done in a way that, listen, you stupid ass, you, you said you wanted to go. I, I said I understood and I'm letting you go. And so I think it's important that you give the person control to make the decision. But if it backfires, then you can handle things with kid gloves, proceed from a different way, and... The bottom line is you have to try to get to what the real problem is or what are they trying to communicate that they can't communicate because either they don't know how or they don't feel like they're, you know, they feel worthless and unimportant. So sometimes you may have to walk them through that, you know. If that goes through, you know, there, there's a conflict and, you know, I, I need to leave. Go ahead and leave. I understand that. We'll see you next week. Well, that means you don't want me here. He has something to fall back on. Handle it with good gloves. I want you to stay here. You're telling me you need to leave. I'm giving you control to make that decision for yourself. And if that doesn't work, then you have the opportunity to come back again handling it with kid gloves and you can ask I understand something is troubling you what is it that you need from me so I can help you and none of these are guaranteed to work but you have a better opportunity of making it work and calming the person down by giving them control in dealing with the situation with kid gloves rather than trying to be confrontational, being sarcastic, being defensive, and you might have a little bit more success. Basically what you're trying to do is get the person from thinking all emotional to start thinking a little bit rationally. And a lot of times I think this is why a lot of therapists don't like to work with people that are borderline personality disorder. And coming to therapists, you know, let's talk about this. My therapist actually gave me her phone number so I could tell her, you know, what videos I put up. Man, how dangerous is that? You know, I could be texting her all the time and like calling her every single minute of the day, which I don't. But there are borderlines out there that think they should have 24-hour access to their therapist and 
when they can't reach their therapist, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, shit hits the wall. If I was a therapist, I'd be like, call me any fucking time you want to, but you call me, I'd be like a lawyer. I'm charging you for it. I'd have one of those numbers, buck ninety nine a minute. But for my advice, it'd be two ninety nine or three ninety nine. But there's a lot of therapists and psycholo psychologists and psychiatrists that don't want anything to do with borderline personality disorder because we're difficult. But I think a lot of it rests with the therapist because, again, they have this approach where they want to fix everything. And we're going back years to childhood and not everything can be fixed. And if I can't fix it, there's a good possibility they can't fix it. And a lot of times the advice they give is common sense. And so confrontation exists between the patient and the therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist where it's gotta be their way or no way. And again, they gotta give control and be understanding that this is a serious issue. Give them control try to understand, and I think that's why the, my therapist watched a, a lot of these videos, is to try to understand my thinking, because we do think illogically, we think emotionally rather than rationally. And so the therapists that are out there that people get, and they're like, these are bad therapists, they hate us, blah, 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 they don't want to see us, it's because they're, they're banging heads. Borderline, I'm not ready to do this therapist, you got to do this. If you don't want to do this, then there's nothing I can do for you. I can't fix you. And if I can't fix you, there's no point in seeing you. And that's the wrong approach. It's important for the therapist to let the client go at their own pace and give the client control and let them make the decisions and go at their own pace. And a lot of my poetry that I'm writing and a lot of things that I'm writing deals with there's nothing wrong with saying to a question, I don't know the answer. And I don't know if I'll ever know the answer. Don't know if you'll ever be able to fix the problem. I think that's better than trying to solve a problem that's really complex. And by doing that, it can be invalidating to the situation that the person has. It's more validating, I think, to say, I understand you have serious illness. I understand things happened in your childhood. I understand you need to have, to have control. I, need, I understand that you need to go at your own pace. I'm fortunate that I have a therapist that is trying to understand this, is trying to proceed from a different direction and trying to learn how my mind works and how I see things from a different point of view. And rather than trying to fix these problems or trying to find solutions or a cure, she's understanding and <clears throat> let, letting me go at my own pace. And she's accepting um, that there may not be an answer or she may not know the answer and the answer may never come. But it may. <clears throat> but it's not force feeding stuff down the person with borderline personality's throat. And I think that's important. And I think that's why so many uh, people with borderline personality disorder have a problem finding a therapist. Because they don't want to listen. <clears throat> they want to solve problems. It's got to be their way or no way. And it creates conflict. And it actually creates a lot of stress for people with borderline personality disorder. And it actually makes them feel really bad because it makes them feel like nobody cares and nobody is listening to them. And um, I think if more therapists took the approach that my therapist does, I think there would be more success. It doesn't mean the person's going to be fixed, but at least it's showing somebody cares to listen to their problems rather than trying to force feed them and fix their problems that they know nothing about, that they don't understand because our thinking is illogical and all emotional and goes back to a lot of childhood and is very traumatic. 
So a lot of this video is dealing with control. I'm lucky. I have a therapist that cares, isn't force feeding me stuff, and is trying to watch these videos to understand me um, so she can better help me. And is learning that there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know the answer. I don't know if I'll ever know the answer. I don't know if you'll ever be fixed. This may just be your life and you'll have to deal with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So anyways, this video had to deal with control. My advice is, is if you have a friend that's borderline personality disorder and they're getting upset or outraged or flipping out, it's important. Give them the control. Let, the, you know, relinquish control. Let them have it. Let them make the decisions. Try to be understanding. If that's not working, try to approach it with kid gloves because something is bothering them and they either feel worthless to where they don't feel entitled for somebody to care or that it won't be taken seriously or they may not know how to explain what it is they're feeling so they may need you to help get that out of them and basically the whole point of that is to get them to stop thinking emotionally start thinking more rationally but if you take a sarcastic approach a defensive approach smart ass approach you'll get nowhere and you'll make matters worse um, so that's this video I'm going to do a video later on an update on lost and hiatus I'm not doing it tonight I'm getting super tired I'm going to upload these um, if you like the video subscribe post to Facebook Twitter Google Plus all that stuff anyways thanks for watching these videos I hope they're helpful in some ways like it, leave comments, good night.